they came into the house with flashlights and the lights were off and they stated uh, in no uncertain terms that I was going to be arrested no matter what because it was domestic violence. Uh, the one cop was kind of aggressive. He said, grow some nuts. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he says, well, you know what? You're going to move on. You can't stay here. So they put me in the car and away we went. My name's Oliver. I live in Burlington, Ontario. Back in 2011, uh, I was charged with uh, assault uh, times two of assault with a weapon and uttering threats. Uh, it was 2011. I still remember the day like it was yesterday. And the weapon of uh, the situation was a box of Kraft Dinner, uh, which she tossed at me first and I tossed at her. Uh, the box of Kraft Dinner didn't break or wasn't uh, shattered or anything like that. It was just two grown adults being acting like children. The cops have to make an arrest and obviously the guy that's going to go is me and she gets to stay and she gets to stay in a matrimonial home. The consequences of being in jail at that time was it gave her time to have a plan and one of the ones was uh, she had the PIN number to my account that I gave to her because hey I trust my wife. She cleaned it out and she took time to do it because she couldn't take all the money out all at once so she had to repeatedly go to the banks, the bank machines to do it. Nobody will t do a court case on uh, you know um, pro bono work or on contingency even though I have a $300,000 house, but you know, I, I can't access the money out of it. There was no support for our family from my dad. Even if as a single man he could have gotten some small amount of support, the family side of things is very ignored. It seems like when people think of single parent families, they always think of the women the mother being the parent and there are so many services for, for women in that situation but when the reverse happens and it's the man that stays a single parent there's there's nothing that I know of for him to no support. For me personally I guess the issues were very obvious for me when it came to support from my father. Um, he was a single father when I was very very young and there was four of us all under the age of five when he first became a single parent and there weren't really any resources for him. He I found that he was very stressed and, and didn't really have anybody to go to and it's not like there are a lot of single father families so it's not even like there was a lot of people he could find to relate to. So without services there, there literally was nothing for him. So I always felt like if there, was, if there was something, if there was someone that he could go to that knew what was going on and could help and I, I feel like my life could have gone a different way. It didn't and as a result of that I lived on the streets when I was about 15 for a couple of years and I saw a glaring difference in the resources that were available to me and to my male friends. So on a really cold night, chances were very good that I could find a shelter and I could find somewhere to sleep. But a lot of the time I'd have to leave my male friends behind because there's a lot of women only shelters and women and children only shelters. It's, it's very rare that you find something that will accept men and then I find even the ones that do, they still prioritize women and children. We hop in my car and we start driving around. And the whole time we're driving, there's this, uh, there's, there's a real sense of awkwardness in the car because every time I asked him, well, why can't we just go to your place and, and talk there? And he keeps uh, giving me this nervous uh, laugh and he's not, he's sort of dodging the question and, okay, all right, uh, I'm not gonna make any assumptions here. Let's just find out what's up. Um, I had a father who was homeless. So we pull into a hotel Get out of the car, we go sit down. He lays it on me, Sammy, I'm homeless. But nobody wanted to touch me with a 10-foot pole, including the John Howard Society. And I had to actually plead guilty to one of the charges. So I copped the plea, as they say in the legal terms, for one of the assault with the weapon, and the other two were dismissed. I have had a few friends take their lives. All of them have been male. From what I saw, my personal perception, obviously I can't say what was going through their heads, I have no idea, but from my personal perception, there's so much more pressure. Like, we were in the same role. 
and we're both living in the same place we are both doing the same things but there's so much more pressure and even if you take the street kid aspect out of it and you just take regular gender roles in a regular life there's so much more pressure on men so when something does go wrong like let's say there are layoffs or something like that there's so much pressure on men to be the provider that when suddenly that that carpet is yanked from under their feet there because there's been no other support to say what happens if you can't be the provider anymore it's like they're I find that they just seem very lost and I think that's where a lot of that suicide comes from is just who can you talk to you know what I mean and uh, as the pieces started to come together, it basically turns out that he, um, his second marriage fell apart. Um, he couldn't afford to pay, keep up the property taxes on his house anymore, and uh, he was evicted. It's simple as that. I think that this place is going to offer a lot of value, more long term than short. I feel like ultimately, for me personally, ideal world would be where there's no, there's no gender conversation at all when it comes to support and it comes to issues. It's just people. But in today's world, everybody talks about women all the time. Everybody talks about what happens to women and what can happen to women and what men are doing to women. But I don't hear a lot of conversations about what's happening to men. And I think that a center like this and, and facilities like this will go a very long way to getting that out there because word of mouth is a very big thing. Those conversations need to happen and they don't happen enough right now. We're the victims people don't always hear from. I think it's terrific that women have all the help they can get. But why is it men don't have those same services? Men are human beings and I think that, yeah, there needs to be a greater call for Men, men's services. I am glad that this center is in, in, in place now. It's a long time overdue. Uh, I've seen other friends and colleagues, some people even in law enforcement that have uh, been through this system. And now it's time for an organization like the Men's Center here to assist people and provide assistance to males that they would never get anywhere else and they need their funding to, to keep this organization going. It's baby steps right now, but every step counts. There's a lot of men, and I'm fortunate I don't have any children, but I know a lot of guys that do and are going through the gauntlet of he said, she said, and they, they need the assistance of an organization like the Men's Center. So please donate. It's, it's a good cause. It's a worthy cause. It will save a lot of people and a lot of children and families all the anguish that's going on right now because it's needed. It's needed out there. There's no other organization like this.